Hey Damn friends, it. it's Mrs. Paige. I'm so glad you're here. We're at the Eugene Airport today. We get to go have a tour. In a moment, we're gonna go pop inside and meet Mr. Andrew, who's gonna be our guide. Thanks for coming, let's go check it out. All right, hi, I'm Andrew Marks. I'm the Acting Assistant Airport Director for the Eugene Airport. Uh, so I, uh, I uh, head up the management team for the airport. So that covers everything that happens here. So from operations to uh, security and inter interfacing with the TSA, airfield maintenance, our terminal facilities uh, uh, staff, uh, environmental project management, our construction project management, and also our interface with all our tenants. So that's our airlines, our concessionaires, and then also all our general aviation folks. So that's all the private planes. Oh my goodness, you're busy. I, right. I wear a lot of hats, uh, but it keeps me busy and I like that. Awesome, okay, well let's go look around. Okay. Okay guys, so when you are at the airport, you're gonna get told to go to a gate. This A2 is the name of a gate and these lovely people, ladies behind here, do stuff at the gate. They help you with your tickets and they'll check your tickets and then you walk down this area and down that bridge over there to get to your plane. So this is the beginning of your journey. And just because you're at the gate, you actually get to spend a lot of time waiting with all of these people here. Because you wait for a while. You have to get here super early. All right, so we're walking down the gate here. There's some people getting off the plane. Bye guys. See you guys, See you later. I bet this is the pilot, maybe. All right, so this is the plane door. We can't go on the plane, but this is what they would use to secure it. They secure it from the outside or the inside? Inside. Okay, so the attendants will secure it from the inside as you fly up. This plane just arrived, and so it's being cleaned and things. And um, what is this spot right here? This is the jet bridge area. So this is where the ground crew actually move the jet bridge. So when the plane comes in, they move the jet bridge up to the plane. Okay. When the plane's ready to go, they move it back so it can be, the plane is clear to go. So this bridge here is not a part of the plane. It connects there so that you can just walk right off and it feels like it's a part of the plane. Okay, so why don't you tell us what's happening here? So right now they're fueling this aircraft so it's ready to go when uh, it's time for it to leave. And uh, the, you can see the fuel 
hose going into the wing. Uh, majority of commercial aircraft, their fuel tanks are in the wing. So that's why the fuel's going in there. And so, there, like in the wing, like all along that flatbed or behind that? Yeah. The fuel is actually inside the, the good part of the wing. There's fuel tanks on both sides. above because uh, that means the fueler would have to step up the wing and that can cause damage. Oh, cool. So there's parts of the aircraft uh, you don't step on, like you don't ever sit in the engine for, uh, where the fan is there. I know you might have seen pictures of people doing that, but that can cause damage to that engine coil and uh, that's not good anyway to have a mechanic come and look at it and make sure it's okay. okay. Okay, so Mr. Andrew's going to tell us about this tower that we see behind us right there, guys. What goes on in there? So that is the air traffic control tower, and that's actually controlled by the Federal Aviation Administration, which is run by the federal government. So inside that tower, there are air traffic control uh, workers who control the airspace all around the Eugene Airport. And actually, our tower here in Eugene also controls the airspace around Medford Airport. And so once a plane moves onto a taxiway or a runway, and also when it's in the air, it's under the control of the FAA and the air control tower, no longer under the control of the airport. So anytime you see a plane in the air, uh, that's not the airport that they're talking to, that's the air traffic control tower. Okay, cool, here we go. All right, so if you've flown, you know that most planes have a lavatory on board, so people can go to the restroom. And so when a plane lands and if there's uh, a need to change it out, a lot of airlines will use a cart or something like this and hook it up to the plane and all that stuff that was in the in the bathroom goes into here and then it's properly disposed of and it goes into our wastewater system just like you would at home. Awesome! So it doesn't just float out into the sky, they dispose of it properly. So this is uh, our drinking water supply. into a, a baggage room for each airline. Then the airlines will put it on the top like this. When it's full, uh, uh, so behind me are a couple examples of de-ice trucks. So during the winter time, when there's ice or snow or something like that, conditions call uh, for the planes to have uh, what's called glycol or de-icer sprayed upon uh, the wings and, and all the parts that are moving to make sure that there's no problems with icing uh, and, and stuff like that that would make it safe. So these trucks get driven and there's a person that would go into this bucket and they would have a, a, a way to apply the, the glycol or the de-icer fluid to the plane and then they have So these are where, when you come to an airport and you want to check a bag or check in for your flight, you come into a ticket counter. So this is a typical ticket counter, it's not busy at the moment, but uh, you always want to make sure you get here early because if there's a line, you got to make sure you're through before they cut the timing off because they've got to be able to get everyone through security and get all the bags on the plane. So that's why you always want to be early for a flight. You don't ever want to try and cut it too short because you might miss your plane. And one cool thing we have here in Eugene is we have hearing loop technology. So people who have hearing aids, uh, the agents can talk into a microphone and the sound goes directly into their hearing aid so that they can hear better and it blocks out all the background noise so it helps people with hearing loss. Oh, lovely. Yeah. I'm sure that's great for both parties. Yeah. And then they put their luggage. Oh, the that. luggage goes right on this scale and you can see how much it would weigh right there. So each airline's a little different on how much weight you can have in your bag before they charge you extra fees. So you always want to check with your airline beforehand so that you don't end up paying too much for your bag. Right. Yep. And then they put the luggage back there. The baggage goes on the belt right there, disappears into there, and that's where the magic scanning machines are for TSA. And they can see everything in your bag. 
And if they see something they don't like, they'll open up your bag and they'll take a look and uh, make sure that it's not dangerous. And if they do open up your bag, they always put a note inside to let you know that they opened your bag. Okay. Um, but yeah, if there's something dangerous in there, usually the airline staff will call you back to the ticket counter and go, hey, what's this? Uh huh. <laughs> okay. So, so when you get off of a uh, flight, you go to the what they call baggage claim. And at baggage claim, we have baggage belts. Here in Eugene, we have two of them. And so the bags get unloaded from the plane. They get loaded on the belt on the outside. And then they come down this black belt you see there onto the turnaround. And so the hope is always that your bag makes it. But sometimes, like if you were really close to missing your flight, if your bag wouldn't make it on because it wasn't enough time, or just sometimes, you know, things happen. <laughs> so generally, if your bag doesn't come down, you just talk to your airline and they figure out a way to get it to you later on. Got it. Okay, so this isn't the end, but I wanted to stop and share with you because this is pretty cool. So there's security measures at all airports, so we were, are not able to see um, exactly what happens at the Eugene airport, but I found a video that will share this with you that's pretty cool. So this is not at the Eugene airport, this is at SeaTac, which is the Seattle Tacoma airport which is huge. Okay, so I just wanted to really quick, I'm gonna give you this view. So this right here is the Eugene Airport, okay? So this is an aerial view. So we have one concourse and each of these are gates where you would get onto your plane. So this is where we walked through. All right, so, and then this, let me show you the difference here. This right here, is the SeaTac airport. So you can see that they have one, two, three, four, and even this external one where you would ride a bus to get out here. So this airport is a lot bigger than the Eugene airport. So that what's happening with the luggage here is really on a grander scale, but I thought you might like to see it because um, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to show you this video so you can follow the path of the luggage at SeaTac Airport. Millions of us check luggage at SeaTac Airport every year. But what happens to those bags once we leave the ticket counter and head for the gates? The answer, it turns out, is a long and winding path on a series of conveyor belts that total nearly nine and a half miles. Port of Seattle's Arlen Fagerstrom explains. We're, we're probably running about 60 to 65,000 bags a day during the holidays. The route that a bag takes to get from the ticket counter to the aircraft is quite complex. It starts out at the ticket counter load belt, goes through a secure door. It's like a freeway with a bunch of on-ramps. The ticket counters are the on-ramps, the curbside belts are the on-ramps, and they join up into a collector belt. For SeaTac, most of the baggage conveyors that we have, they're shared by multiple airlines. We have one particular system that is unique to one airline, and, uh, but all the rest of them are shared systems. The, the complexity of the systems has really uh, has grown tremendously since 9-11. Since it's a constant effort to make sure that, that the bag systems are operating all of the time. There are flights leaving at all hours of the day. Those bags then travel through the screening system that uh, was developed and implemented after the events of 9-11. And that system is monitored and maintained by the TSA. So the bags are screened through a large machine. And if the bag is clear, it then follows through another subsystem that takes the bags to a sortation system and it sorts it by airline based on the uh, bag tag and the barcode similar to what you'd see at a grocery store. A laser array scans the barcode on bag tags. It tells us what airline it's going to, what flight it's going to. For those few bags that don't read properly, just after the laser there is a a side belt that the bags will divert. The system says, I don't know where you're supposed to go, so I'm going to send you to someone who can help you. And so we have a manual encoding station where the bag will go to them, 
They'll scan the bag tag with a hand scanner and send it to where it needs to go. Airline employees then collect those bags and further divide them by first class and coach, depending on if they break those up into different containers or different areas of the aircraft. Put those into the uh, containers or the carts and then take them by a tug and a little train out to the airplane and load them in the airplane. And while Okay, so that's the gist of what happens to your luggage after it disappears on that conveyor belt. Um, and then I also wanted to share one other video with you that I thought, so when we started out, I started at like the gate, but before you get to the gate, you actually have to go through security and we were not able to go um, and um, check that out. So I wanna show you this video here that gives you a little idea of what it's like to go to air Port security because it's a little some of the things that they have you doing there is a little bit different so um let's see i'm hoping i'm just going to double check to make sure i've got the right screen shared there it is and we'll watch this short video on airport security the next part of the process is to be passed through the security checking area this is a very important process that everyone has to do and is for the safety of all air travellers. There will be another queue to join and waiting times can vary a lot. It may be noisy and crowded with the possibility of warm, even high temperatures. Again, it will be important to check that you have none of the prohibited items for air travel. When you arrive at the security check area, you will be asked to do several things that may feel uncomfortable or unusual. But these things are important for all air travellers to ensure safety. You'll be asked to place any hand luggage or bags you will be taking onto the plane into a special tray. You will also have to place any loose items like phones, electronic devices, keys, coins and any other metallic items into this tray. You may even be asked to remove your shoes, belts, brooches or tie pins if they are metallic or have metal on them. The tray will then pass through a machine that can see inside your bag or other items with x-rays. You will then be asked to individually pass through a big arch that is a metal detector machine to check that you haven't forgotten to place any items in the tray. But sometimes an alarm sound will go off as you pass through the arch. This will indicate to the security people that there is still something metallic on you or in your pocket. If this happens, there will be an additional check made by an individual security person. You may be asked to allow a security person to rub a small piece of cloth on your shoes. This swab will then be placed into a detector machine and will check for any prohibited chemicals or substances. Once scanner checks are completed, you'll be asked to collect your items from your tray at the end of the conveyor system. The conveyor system is often quite loud and clunky. All right, so that gives you a little bit of an idea for what security is like. So let's get back to our, um, our recording here. We'll finish up and then we'll get Mr. Andrew back up here for your questions. Um, and there we go. Yeah. And what is this board back here doing? So this is called a FIDS board or flight information display. And what this board shows is what the upcoming flights are, whether delayed and uh, generally what gate they're going to go out of. Okay. Now, they have this ticket counter, but the last many times I've flown, I don't have to come here because I can also get tickets online and... You can do, if, you, if you're, uh, you can get it on your phone. If you have, uh, each airline has an app, you can get the download the app. And I think it's a great way to fly. You get everything on your app, it's all on your phone. You don't have to worry about paper or anything and you can do it all at home. And then most airlines at this point, you can print out your bag tags at home and you put your bag tag on your own bag and they have a really fast line. You just drop your bag off, they show your ID, and they take it, you don't have to wait in line. Sweet, Yeah. awesome. Okay, so we're standing next to our fabled Tracktown USA duck. So we're proud to be a uh, part of the community and be part of Tracktown. And uh, Eugene, we, uh, we really love seeing people travel and having fun, and whether they're coming 
to the area from outside to either enjoy what's here or visit family and friends or the other way around people going on vacation people traveling for business uh, we love being here we love what we do and everyone here works as a team and we're here to help make everyone's travels uh, as easy as possible well thank you so much this was really cool to see this i know the kids are going to have questions so we'll get them on and let them ask you questions. Thank you for this tour. It was great to see all the parts of the airport. So Happy thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Andrew. That was fun times. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so how about, I see hands raised, and how about we get calling on some people with questions that you may have? How about we start with Levi? Do you have a question for Mr. Andrew? Yeah. Um, what is... Um, did somebody ever get something metal through or like a gun or something like that through the machine? Are you talking not about the, through security? Yeah, to answer your question, not that I know of, not here at Eugene. Yeah. I know there have been some places where there's been um, some reports of that, but uh, luckily here at Eugene, we haven't had to have that issue. Sweet. Security is really good. Like those machines that they use are, are great at keeping us safe. Good question. Yep. And we actually just got all brand new upgraded machines. So they're all the latest type of machine. Awesome. How about Lauren? I've been to the Eugene Airport. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have a question for Mr. Andrew? Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Okay, we'll try Paige. How many people have been at your airport in one day? Gosh, in one day, we've had, uh, you know, probably 25,000 people. So before all the pandemic stuff, and that would have been the year 2019, so just about two years ago, we had 1.2 million people come through the Eugene airport for the year. That's a lot. Um, how about Ayla? What kind of new machines did you get? We got new scanning machines. So those are the TSA security machines. So both the machines that the people go through at the security checkpoint to go towards their plane and also the machines that uh, scan the bags. All recently, we got the newest and best models. Awesome, thank you, Ayla. And Sophia? How long did you think the, the um, when was, the airport of Eugene built? Well, the original airport was built in the 1940s and it was actually used during World War II. And the original, original airport was actually not located where it is now. It was located at uh, where 18th and Chambers is. So there's like a Bymart there and a bunch of stores. So the original, original airport was there, not here. Wow. All right, Danny, do you have a question? It's Donnie, uh, and this is my sister, Thea. She might have a question too, but what's your biggest airplane? Our biggest airplane? Well, most days normally would be like a, a Airbus A320 or a Boeing 737, but we, as an airport, are rated up to a Boeing 757. And we've actually, we've had the president, uh, you know, his big 747 aircraft has come to the Eugene airport as well as larger aircrafts like Boeing 777s. But most days it's a 737 or a 320. Um, and also um, my, my sister might have a question too. Her name's Leah. My question is why were airports made? 
Well, airports were originally made um, by, well, the, before the FAA, there was the CAA, and they made airports to carry mail. That was the original purpose of commercial aircraft, was a transport of mail throughout the US. And then eventually that turned into carrying passengers. And so airports are made so that airplanes can land at them and people can go where they want to go. Awesome. Okay, I Donnie's question made me um, have a question about, um, so you had said that you're rated for certain sizes of planes. Is that all due to like the size of the airport or the size of the runway? Like what determines your rating for the sizes of planes that you can have? Well, sometimes it's the runway, but we have, so we have two runways, one that's 8,000 feet long and one that's 6,000 feet long. So we can take large aircraft, but mostly it's about how our uh, jet bridges are laid out. So there's always, if you look on the ground around an aircraft when it's parked, there's a red line and that's called a safety envelope. And so we get a rating based upon the size of aircraft and how big its wings are and how long it is that can sit next to each other at a gate. Ah, got it. Okay. All right. Thanks for letting me get in there, you guys. How about Maddie? How many planes do you have? How many planes do you have? Well, the airport doesn't actually have any planes. The airline has planes, okay. but the planes right. come here. So okay. like on a typical um, night, there will be around 10 or 11 planes that spend the night here. And then they come go throughout the day. So there's probably 20 or 30 flights a day uh, on an average day. And that doesn't include like private aircraft or cargo aircraft. And then we also have military aircraft that use our uh, airport for training. It's a mailman. And every once in a while we hear those, don't we? Flying over those military. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, how they're, about, they're oh, go ahead. I yep. said the military ones are a little louder. You can always right. tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Faye, do you have a question? Um, I wanna, one of my, I had two things I want to say. One um, is how big, um, how big and how many rooms, um, so how big is the airport? How many rooms are in the airport? And also, well, at the beginning of the um, at the beginning of the video, you were showing. Oh, um, I think that you were talking about tents. I'm in a tent. Okay, so I got some of that. So the airport is two thousand six hundred acres. So we have a lot of land. Um, number of rooms. Wow, no one's ever asked me that before. Um. Uh, I would guess probably 200, 250 rooms, best guess, but don't hold me to that. And I totally didn't hear the last part. <laughs> so I think maybe Faye too was wondering like how many gates you have. Oh, sure. So we have uh, six A gates that have jet bridges. And then we have four B gates, which are load from the ground instead of from a jet bridge. Okay, cool. Um, Faye, do you want to tell us what your second question was there? I, yeah, um, so uh, I was just telling, um, it's not, uh, it wasn't a question, I'm just saying that, um, at the beginning of the video, oh, I think he was talking about tents, and I'm in a tent right now. You were talking about tents. Okay, I don't know if we were talking about tents, but I can see that you're in a cozy little tent. Tents are cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack, do you have a question? Sure, I do. Amy, do they have conveyor belts here at the Eugene Airport? Yes, we do. So for our baggage systems, so when they, you drop off your bag at the baggage or at the ticket counter, it goes on a conveyor belt and goes through the TSA screening process. And then another conveyor belt takes them out. So they go back to the airline so they can get them loaded on the planes. It's just a lot smaller than the video that I showed you. So if you caught that at the beginning of that video I showed you, SeaTax Airport has nine and a half miles of conveyor belts. Eugene's isn't quite that big. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's That's a little good. shorter. I like a smaller airport. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay, we'll take one more question. How about Georgina? So how many buses are there? I remember we ride a bus when I was a little kid. How many buses there are? How many buses? Yeah, remember I we I remember I was on, when I was a little kid, we ride a bus when there was in the airport. That was in Los Angeles. Oh, yes. So in some airports, the terminal, like the plane lands a long way from the building you have to get to. So you actually have to get out of the plane, hop in a bus and ride it to the main airport building. But Eugene isn't that big. So we don't do that. Yeah, Not yet. we don't have buses. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Andrew, we did not get a picture of this. Can you talk a little bit about how the airport has its own fire department? Yeah, so we actually have our own firehouse. It's called Station 12. And we have three specially made fire engines that are made just for putting out fires for airplanes. And so we have, um, whenever the airport has flights going, which is pretty much 24 hours a day, we have firemen on staff and what all they're there for is to help out in case we have some kind of emergency. Awesome, cool. Yeah. Hey, you all, Mr. Andrew was so awesome to give us his time. And now you know a little bit more about what will happen one day when you eventually get to fly to another part of the world. And I just read this morning that airports are starting to open up and people are traveling more um, as we get a handle on this pandemic. So it'll be exciting um, to get on a plane and go somewhere. And now you know a little bit more about what to expect when you get to the airport. Would you all give Mr. Andrew a virtual wave of gratitude? Thank you so much for being here, Mr. Andrew. It was awesome to have this tour. I really appreciate your time. And I might just be back next year to bug you some more. Thank <laughs> it's you so all great. much. It was my pleasure and it was nice meeting everybody. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, my friends, so we are going to read and I just happened to have found a really fun book called the airport book. And I'm pretty excited to share it with you. I love this book. It's got some fun animations in it and gives you another perspective, follows a family getting ready on their trip to go to the airport um, and to go traveling. So let me turn off this so that we can get a handle on all the pictures here. So this is called the airport book and it is written and illustrated by Lisa Brown. So she's an author so she wrote the words and drew all the pictures. And the story starts right in the very beginning on the, I'm not even on the page, but she starts telling her story right away in these pictures. I love that. You can see this family right here in their window getting ready for travel. The Airport Book by Lisa Brown. And you can see where it's already, the story starting. I pack monkey. Don't forget monkey. Of course I won't forget monkey. Where's my hat? Look at his hats on his head. Does that ever happen to you guys? You're looking for something and it's right there in front of you. When you go to the airport, you can take a car, a van, a bus, or even a train. Hurry up, please, it's time. We're hurrying. Goodbye house. Sometimes we take a taxi cab. You drive on the highway to where the ground is really flat. Kind of important to have a flat surface for your airport takeoff. There are lots of people seeing lots of goodbyes. Sometimes they hug, sometimes they cry. Love you, grandma. They have big bags on wheels and smaller bags on their shoulders and their backs. Sometimes you can tell exactly what is packed inside a bag like that, right? Pretty sure that's a guitar. And sometimes it's a mystery. Like who knows what that is, right? What are your line, please? All these people taking all different kinds of travel to the airport. 
inside the airport, you stand in lines, you stand in lines to get your ticket, you stand in lines to check your bags. There are lines for the restrooms, there are lines to go to security. Blah, 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 goo. Have a good trip, sir. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Did you forget to pack monkey? ID, please. I gotta tell you, this is a really good book to help prepare you because when you go to the airport, you gotta get there early and prepare to stand in lines. A machine x-ray x-rays all the bags that take you on the plane. And sometimes another machine x-rays your body. You will also take that with you on the plane. Shoes off team, empty your pockets please. So just like we saw in that video, they have to take the shoes off sometimes, their coats, Wee! you're okay. Little sisters cry when they go through the scanner. It's kind of a little different experience. You walk past benches and shops, and restaurants and art exhibits. It's like a little indoor town. Sometimes there are small beeping cars driving through the town. Sometimes the sidewalks and staircases move by themselves. That's what this is. You can just stand there and it just moves for you. You have to hold your little sister's hand tight or she can get lost. When you reach your gate, you wait and wait and wait. I see monkey. Don't be silly. Outside, people are getting the plane ready. They're checking that everything is working and safe and clean and ready to fly. Things are loaded onto the plane. Gas get puts into, gets put into the fuel tanks. Food is put into the galley. Luggage is put into the cargo hole. The crew put themselves on board and takes their places. There's this lady. She's still talking on the phone, blah, blah, blah. Now the passengers can board. You wait until your group is called and then you walk down the jetway. This is what we walked down right here I was showing you. It looks like an accordion. You squeeze into your seat. Some bags go up top and some bags go underneath. You can even bring your animals. You have to make sure that you have all your books and papers and music and games and toys before the plane takes off. Because you're gonna be sitting around for a while, you better bring some fun things to do, right? You listen quietly to the safety announcements and you stow your tray table. You buckle your seat belt tied across your lap. To inflate the life jacket, fill the tab or blow into the tube. This is the airline attendant and she's gonna tell you all about the safety measures. Shh, a flight attendant walks up and down the aisle pushing a cart. Sometimes you get something to drink. Sometimes you get something to eat. Sometimes there's a movie to watch. Sometimes there are people to talk to. Peekaboo! Sometimes the plane is bouncy but most of the time it's smooth. Outside there are clouds and clouds and clouds. Take care, monkey. When the plane lands, you collect all your things. You say goodbye to the crew and go to the baggage carousel and find the bags you checked. Welcome. This lady's talking on the phone again. Blah, 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 blah. The bags travel around the circle and when you see your bags, you pull it off fast. Monkey! Hey, look. Wow, where did he come from? Your bag, you have to take, make sure that your bag is really your bag. Do you have the hostel reservations? The hotel reservations? Arf, there's the dog. They've been reunited. And there's her monkey right there. Crazy that monkey made it. Outside, there are lots of people saying lots of hellos. Sometimes they hug, sometimes they cry. Then everyone leaves. Hey, we missed you. Grandpa, Nana, hi, son. Next in line, mommy. 
lots of hellos. When you leave the airport, you take a car, a van, a bus, or even a train. We're taking grandpa's car. And when you do everything, and then you do everything all over again in the other direction when it's time to go back home. Bye, airport. That's the end. Totally fun book, isn't it? That was the airport book and it's written by Laura, sorry, sorry, Lisa Brown. You can find this with the call number on your book right here in your library. Hopefully, actually we need to get this book in our libraries because none of our libraries had this book. I had to go to the public library to get it, which reminds me friends, you all can get access to the public library this summer or right even now. You can call the public library and say you're a 4J student so you can have access to all their awesome books all summer long. And they're actually open right now. You can go in there and get books instead of just waiting to have them on hold or doing it online. I went there today to pick out this book for us. So you might want to give that a try this summer so that you can keep reading all summer. And we also have tons of new books in Sora, which is our digital library that you can access through my virtual library. I think your teachers might share that with you. And if they haven't, you can also find it on my web page on the district website. So you can find um, a link to Sora there that will give you access to audiobooks. If you're going on a road trip this summer, audiobooks are great to listen to as a family. You could listen to them on your own, or you could have eBooks on your iPads. So lots of reading options. I'm so glad you joined me today, and I can't wait to see you next week for our bee field trip. We're gonna do a bee rescue. There was a hive that was in a barn that was gonna be torn down. And so we went and rescued it. My husband is a beekeeper. And so we get to watch that happen. It was pretty fascinating. I think you're gonna love it. So I hope you can join me next week. We only have two more field trips before the end of the school year. I'm so excited to share these last two with you. So I will see you all next week. Thank you so much for joining me and have a great week, friends.